You might think of serial killers as a modern-day phenomena. It's commonly believed that the term serial killer was coined in the 1970s by FBI agent Robert Ressler when he helped form the Bureau's legendary Behavioral Sciences Division. But in truth, you can find examples of the terms serial murder and serial killer dating back to at least as far as the 1940s. In these cases, the term was used by some British mystery writers to describe a chain of seemingly unrelated crimes. But even putting the origins of the terminology aside, you can find examples of criminals who fit the textbook definition of a serial killer, dating farther back throughout history than you might believe. So here are three examples of some historic serial killers you likely have never heard of. Number 1. Liu Peng Li In 94 BCE, Sima Xuan, an official in China's Han Dynasty, finished writing the massive history of the world that his father had begun many years earlier. Known to Westerners as the Records of the Great Historian, this ancient tome details the history of China from the time of the legendary Yellow Emperor to the year the author lived. One tiny footnote in this grand history is the story of Liu Peng Li, the nephew of Emperor Jing, who some historians describe as the world's first recorded serial killer. Because of his royal bloodline, Liu Peng Li became the prince of Zhidong and lived around the year 144 BCE. He was one of five sons born to Liu Wu, the prince of the kingdom of Liang. When Liu Wu died, the emperor divided his kingdom into five smaller provinces, each of which were to be ruled by his five sons. But Liu Peng Li proved to be an arrogant and cruel ruler. According to the records of the Grand History, just for fun, Liu Peng Li liked to go out on marauding expeditions with a group of slaves, or young men who were on the wrong side of the law, murdering peasants and seizing their belongings for sheer sport. Over time, Liu Peng Li racked up a body count of more than a hundred. So many victims, in fact, that the people of his kingdom feared to leave their homes at night. As the ruler of the province and nephew to the emperor, the people of Zhidong were powerless to do anything to stop him. Or so Liu Peng Li thought. According to Sima Xuan, eventually the son of one of his victims went to the emperor and informed him of what Liu Peng Li had been doing. The victim's son demanded justice and requested that Liu Peng Li be executed. But the emperor couldn't bear the thought of his own nephew being killed. Instead, at 116 BCE, the emperor stripped Liu Peng Li of his wealth and title and banished him to the county of Shangyang in what is now the Hubei province of China. Unfortunately, that's all the records of the grand history have to say about Liu Peng Li. With so little information to go on, it's difficult to know how much of Liu Peng Li's story we should believe. One possibility remains that Emperor Jing was out to weaken the feudal kingdoms and consolidate power by stripping Peng Li of his land and titles and accusing him of being a murderer. We'll probably never know the truth one way or the other. The entire history of Liu Peng Li and his crimes are contained in a few short lines in a single historical document. But if they're true, then Liu Peng Li might be the earliest recorded serial killer in history. Number 2. Christman Genepratenga The public's fascination with serial killers has been around for centuries. You can see this fascination dating all the way back to the 16th century Germany, when word spread throughout the Holy Roman Empire and people became obsessed with the crimes of a serial killer named Christman Genepratenga. And although there are some historians who doubt that the man existed at all, if he did exist, Christman Genepratenga might well be the most prolific serial killer in history, coming in just below his purported goal of 1,000 victims. According to the legend, Gunnar Patenga operated out of a lair he built inside a cave somewhere in the forests of the Rhineland during the 1570s. He began his criminal career as the head of a gang of robbers. But once Gunnar Patenga got a taste for killing, he just kept on going. Many of his victims were unwary French and German travelers who happened to cross paths with him out in the wilderness. But Gunnar Patenga would kill anyone indiscriminately, including his own partners. Throughout Genepratenga's 13-year criminal career, he reportedly kept a diary of his killings, in which he catalogued a staggering 964 victims, coming in just shy of his ultimate goal of 1,000 murders. If true, this would make Genepratenga the most prolific serial killer in history. Some reports say that by the time Genepratenga was caught, he had amassed a fortune of 70,000 gulden, 
I know that figure probably doesn't mean much to you or I, but just to put it into perspective, consider that back in 1639, Rembrandt spent about 13,000 gulden on his home in Amsterdam, which translated into today's money would be the equivalent of $780,000. Back in the 16th century, your average laborer earned around 300 gulden per year, which just goes to show how successful a robber and murderer Genner Batenga was. One major problem you'll find with the stories about Crispin Genner Batenga's exploits is that they have almost certainly become embellished over the years. You can even find stories claiming the man had supernatural abilities, and that he could become invisible at will, and even worked alongside a secret cabal of magical dwarves. No, not those ones. According to the legend, Genner Batenga was finally caught after he took a woman hostage and held her captive in his cave for several years. During that time, he reportedly impregnated her on several occasions, although he supposedly murdered and ate all the children. Genepertinga grew to trust his captive enough to take her out in public with him. But on one such outing, she broke free and began screaming for help. On May 27, 1581, a group of 30 armed men set out to capture him. They tracked him back to his cave lair. There they arrested him, and he was subsequently tried and convicted of his nearly 1,000 murders. On June 17th, Genner Patenga was found guilty and condemned to death by breaking on the wheel. This is a ghastly form of medieval torture in which the victim is stretched out on a massive wheel. Over time, the wheel is gradually twisted further and further, stretching and breaking the victim's bones. Genner Patenga reportedly endured nine days of this torture before finally dying of his injuries. Number 3. Lewis Hutchinson, the Mad Doctor of Jamaica when you think of Jamaica, you probably think of sandy beaches, blue ocean water, and palm trees swaying in the breeze. But even the most idyllic setting can have its dark side. Lewis Hutchinson is believed to be Jamaica's first serial killer. He came to be known as the Mad Master, or the Mad Doctor of Edinburgh Castle. He was born in Scotland in 1733, where it's believed he studied medicine. He arrived in St. Anne, Jamaica sometime in the 1760s. After that, he acquired a remote estate he named Edinburgh Castle in honor of his homeland. Even though the estate was miles from nowhere, it would still attract the attention of visitors, although most reports claim Hutchinson was anything but welcoming to strangers. Travelers to Edinburgh Castle began to vanish at an alarming rate. Historical records are sparse, but it's believed that Hutchinson liked to watch from his castle windows for lone travelers. He was said to be a crack shot, Sometimes he would shoot his victims from a distance. Other times he would let them into his home before he murdered them personally. For Hutchinson, killing was a sport. Unlike a lot of serial killers, Hutchinson didn't appear to have a type of victim he preferred. His victims were both male and female, of all races and physical appearances. As time went on, Hutchinson became even more brazen with his killings. He would sometimes entertain his guests with elaborate meals before murdering them. He would then force his slaves to help him dispose of the bodies. They would sometimes drop the bodies into a massive 98-meter sinkhole, or sometimes they would stuff them into the hollow trunk of a tree, after which animal predators would pick apart the flesh. Some stories even claim that Hutchinson liked to hack off his victims' limbs and drink their blood. Eventually, the locals began to suspect something strange was happening at Edinburgh Castle. People began to warn visitors to avoid the area. Eventually, a warrant was issued for the mad doctor's arrest, although the local police were reportedly afraid to apprehend him. Hutchinson's reign of terror finally came to an end after he got in a land dispute with an English doctor who lived near his plantation named Dr. Jonathan Hutton. After Hutchinson attacked Hutton with a saber without provocation, the authorities finally decided enough was enough and it was time to arrest him. An English serviceman named John Callender heard the stories and volunteered to arrest Hutchinson. Although as Callender approached Edinburgh Castle, the mad doctor shot him dead. This proved to be a big mistake, though. That's because Hutchinson actually committed this crime in front of several witnesses. The mad doctor then realized the jig was up, so he fled to Old Harbor where he boarded a ship and set sail for open waters. But by then, members of the Royal Navy had been alerted to the man's escape, they intercepted the ship off the coast. Hutchinson then made one last-ditch effort to escape by jumping overboard and swimming to freedom, but his red hair was easily spotted against the water, and he was quickly apprehended. Hutchinson's slaves told horrific stories about torture and murder, 
police searched Edinburgh Castle and discovered the belongings of Hutchinson's victims. Although his true death toll remains unknown, at least 43 different watches were found. It's possible, though, his number of victims could have reached into the hundreds. Some stories claim the mad doctor didn't work alone, either. Neighboring farmers James Walker and Roger Maddox allegedly participated in some of his crimes. Both men were put to death. Ultimately, Lewis Hutchinson would only be tried for a single murder, that of the soldier John Callender. He was sent to the gallows and executed in Spanish Town Square in 1773. His final wish was to have the following words inscribed in his tombstone. Their sentence, pride and malice I defy, despise their power and like a Roman die. The authorities refused his request. Today only parts of Edinburgh Castle remain. What's left of the structure is a broken stone ruin covered in moss. Hutchinson's hole can still be visited, and it seems to still attract death to it. In November 2003, a 32-year-old man committed suicide by leaping into the pit. His decomposed remains were recovered three months later. Thanks so much for checking out this video. If you like this content and want to see more like it, leave me a comment below. I'd also love it if you would click the subscribe and bell icons to be alerted whenever new videos are posted.